Shalom, shalom. We give our praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Shai. We give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and shalom to the elect that's pushing this word throughout the four corners of the globe. I uh, just wanted to get a couple precepts. Because um, all week, uh, again, uh, brothers in, 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 in our camp here in D.C., as well as throughout the throughout the four corners, we're bringing out the time and season that we're living in, of course. It's a great topic. It's always is a good topic to teach on, and and we we and they spoke about the Ark of the Covenant because uh, Apostle Gabar came out with the the Ark uh, video a couple of days back. We all watched it, of course, and you know everyone had their take on the Ark, what it meant. Of course, it means and it means uh, Yahweh Shai meant Yahweh Shai. Yeah, it's a shadow of things to come, which, which was Yahweh Shai, uh, and it talks. Uh, we uh, he, he talked about the mercy seat. That mercy seat is Yahweh Shai. This is the one who you need to go to uh, for mercy, for salvation, for deliverance. Um, and Yahweh Shai being who the world called Jesus, Yahweh is his heavenly Father. Um, and upon the Ark of the Covenant at the time of Moses, there was a mercy seat. Uh, you can read about that in uh, Exodus, in, in the, uh, the book of Exodus, 25th chapter, uh, starting at the 17th verse. Uh, most likely do a, another video about my take on the Ark. But today I wanted to talk about the mercy seat's content. The mercy seat content. What was in the ark? A lot of times you don't hear about the things. You know, you gloss over it. In Hebrews, the ninth chapter talks about what was in the ark, and we're gonna read it. But we're gonna start off Hebrews, the eighth chapter, and the third verse. It says, "For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, whereof it is of necess necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer." For if it were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of the Most High when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showeth. Yahweh had showed Moses the pattern. The pattern in which uh, that the ark should look like, Salakia. Uh, should have got the scripture. I had the scripture, Salakia Uh Eight and three, right here it says, "Who served as an example?" Verse five, "Who served as an example and show of the heavenly things as Moses was admonished of the Most High." When he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, he said that thou make of all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. And again, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, uh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, had given the pattern to Moses on how to make the ark and what it, what how it should be fashioned. It says, but now hath he attained a more excellent ministry. He's talking about Yahweh Shai, by how much he is also a mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant for if that for for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. But the first covenant was faultless because of the flesh of our of, of, of man, of flesh of the Israelite man who who couldn't get it right. So it was it was a need for a second a second um uh uh covenant or mediator to bring that second covenant for the people for the for 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 their missions and um and for the uh atonement for their sins it says for finding fault with them that them is the israelites he said behold the days come saith the lord when i will make a new covenant with the house of israel with the house of judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not. 
this is what happened. So they didn't regard the mercy seat, which was the Ark of the Covenant and what was contained in them. So we're going to skip to the next um, chapter. It says, for verily the first covenant had also ordinance of a divine service and a worldly sanctuary. Right? There was a tabernacle behind the curtain where the Ark of the Covenant rests. It says, for there was a tabernacle made, right? The first wherein was a candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. So that was in within the first curtain. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. This uh, was behind the second curtain, the holy of holies. Verse four says, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant, right? Overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod. And the, tab the tables of the covenant. And over it was the cherubims of, of glory shadowing the mercy seat. Of which we cannot now speak particularly. But verse 4 is what I wanted to get into. Where it says wherein was, uh, wherein was the golden pot of manna. Aaron's rod and the tables of the covenant. So what, what is that talking about? And what does it uh, represent well let's start off with the law the tables of course we know the tables the tables of stone represent the righteousness of the law statutes and commandments and judgments and how to govern our people right um, and what we did with them this is Exodus 24 and verse 12 it says and the Lord said unto Moses come up to me into the mount and be there and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that thou may have teach, the, teach them teach who the Israelites the tables of stone had the, had the law statutes and commandments written right written by who did Moses write it let's get this Exodus 31 and 18 it says, and he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of the Most High, Yahabashim Yahushai. So we know that these tables was written and these were in the, in the Ark of the Covenant. What we did, what it said to do, it says teach the people. Another scripture, Deuteronomy 4. And 14, it says, And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you may do them in the land whither you go over to possess it. And whatever land we possess, we're supposed to always teach the law. This was a commandment from the beginning. Even during uh, uh, when, when, when we were kicked out the land and we come back into the land in the second temple, we see Ezra doing the same thing. Ezra 7 and verse 10. It says, For Ezra had prepared his heart, his mind, right, to seek the law of the Lord and to do it, and to teach Israel in to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. This was this was part of our culture. This was part of our ways of life. This is this is what we're supposed to have done. So in that tabernacle, in that ark, was the law. We get Nehemiah 8 and 8. It says, So they read in the book of the law of the Most High distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And this is what we did. We called the people to understand what the law meant and how to teach it, what was in it, and how to follow it. This was justified in the sight of, of, the, sight of the Lord. So in that ark was the two tables of stone. Right. And we're supposed to teach the people according to the law that was given to Moses by the finger of Yahweh. The next thing was in the, uh, the in the in the ark was the rod of Aaron. And we read in Numbers. The 17th chapter. We're going to start at the uh, first verse and say, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, and take every one of them a rod according to their house of their fathers, 
and of their princes according to the house of their fathers twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod, and thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi, upon the rod of Levi, for one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers, twelve rods. And thou shalt lay them unto the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I met with you. And it shall come to pass that the, that the man's rod, whom I shall choose, shall blossom and will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against thee. He said, the Lord said that this rod that he shall choose, right, is going to be to cease the people's murmurings. So what does that rod represent? It represents the priesthood and correction of the people. When, 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 um, so verse seven says, and Moses laid up the rod before the Lord of the, the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass on the morrow, Moses went into the tabernacle of witness and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and, and bloom blossoms and yielded almonds. And Moses brought all the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel. And they looked and took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto, unto Moses, bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels, that thou shalt quite take away the murmurings from me, that they that that they die not. And this is what the rod was for. It, it represents the rod, the rod of correction. Let's get that. Proverbs. Because everything that was for physical had now become spiritual through your Yahweh Shai. And that's the whole point of the lesson. This is Proverbs 22 and 15. That the foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So this is what the rod represented. It represents the priesthood of Aaron, the Aaron. Um, um, and it also represents the correction for the foolish. Because the priesthood had a job in the office to do, teach the people, um, take their sins and offerings, atone for them once a year. So that rod of correction, the Aaron's rod, budded in the house of Levi, and it, and it, and 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 it was for and represents the rod of correction. Today, what we have the, the rod of correction now is what through faith through Yahweh Shai. You see, let's get this one more. This is a uh, slot. Proverbs 23 and 13. It says, Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou bear, beateth him with the rod, he shall not die. Right? Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. So we understand through the spiritualness that the rod of Aaron was the rod of correction, and that was the law, statutes, commandments, and the holy things, and the services. And remembrances. Judges 5.11 says what? Let's get it. Judges 5 and 11. It says, They that are delivered from the noise of archers in a place of drawing waters, there you shall rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall thou people of the Lord go down to the gates. The gates represented the leadership. And this is where we get our understanding, like in Nehemiah, that he, that he calls them the understanding of what was read in the book. So the rod of Aaron represents, again, the priesthood and correction. Now, one last thing was the manna. What did the manna represent when the Lord gave the manna? And this is uh, Exodus 16 and 11. Exodus 16 and 11 said, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, speaking to them, saying, At evening you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your power. And it came to pass, at evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew laid round about the host. And when the dew was laid, was gone up, behold, Upon the face of the wilderness there laid a small round thing, as small as a horse frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, It is manna, for they wilt not 
what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord had commanded. Gather of every man according to his eating, according to his eating, and Omer for the for every man, according to the number of your persons, take ye every man for them which are in his tents. So what did manna represent? It represented food for the people. However, it also uh, also uh, when it comes to spiritualness, that the bread from heaven, right, was given to portion to a man's eating or what he could be filled with, what he was able to sustain himself for that day. So it says they gathered every man according to his eating, to his fill. This is what the Lord represents, right? Because he said what? This is Jeremiah 30. And 11, it says, For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, like he did in the wilderness. Though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet I will not make a full end of thee. Talking about the elect. But I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. So it it, it, it represented, this manner represented uh, what was given to a person in his measure. Because everyone has a different measure. Some have more than others. It takes more. Some people, when you think of it physically, it takes more to fill up a person, right? But some people have what they say, like you got a, bait, a, a bird stomach. It don't take much to fill them up, to understand, right? So the, what the manna represent was the bread from heaven, which is Yahushua in the spiritual sense. But it represents the measure and the portion for a person. Each person has a different portion. Right? Let's get this. Romans 12. And 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. Right? And be not conformed to this world, but you be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. For I say through the grace given unto me, here's the point, to every man that is among you, think not, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, right? What we say today, your eyes is bigger than your stomach, but to think soberly. According as God had dealt with every man, the measure of faith. So that manner, the bread from heaven, the understanding of the law, statutes, and commandments, the law, the understanding of faith, the will of the heavenly Father is given to a man by the measure of his own faith. Give us this day our daily bread. What? What is that? That truth. For you, this is your measure. This is what the manner represents. Okay. Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4 and 1, it says, I therefore, the prison of the Lord, beseech you that you work worthily, that you walk worthily of the vocation which you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, so long suffering for bearing one another in love, and during to keep the unity of the spirit and bond of peace, there is one body and one spirit. Even as you are called in the hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one power and father of all who is above all, through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Yahweh Shai. Everyone is given a gift, but in a measure of Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai is salvation and deliverance. He gives you that understanding of him. He gives you that comforter which and settles your stomach. It fills you up. Things that sustain you. That's why in the Lord, in the scripture, in, in, the, in the Lord's prayer, you say, give us this day our daily bread. That, 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 that what you need to, 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 to hold you down. This is given to every man as a gift. Okay? Let's get this last scripture. 
just to seal the deal. This is John 6. And I'm start at 31. It says, uh, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Yahweh Shah said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. Right? But my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of Yahweh is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. This is Yahweh Shah. It's in red, this is him speaking. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst, like they did in the desert. See, it wasn't true bread, because you thirsted after, and you were hungry after. This was done, this bread uh, and the quails and the water was given to the children of Israel in the desert for 40 years. We talking about an everlasting thirst, an everlasting quenching of thirst, and an everlasting quenching of hunger. Hunger for what? Truth and righteousness. It says, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will no wise cast him out, or in no wise cast out. For I am come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which he hath sent, which hath sent me, that of all that which have given me I should lose nothing, but should raise up, raise it up again in the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him, right? That mercy seat, the un the, the, the spiritualness and the understanding of the contents of the ark may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. And this is the whole purpose of the contents of the mercy seat. This is the whole contents of the of the things that were in within the ark, the Ten Commandments, Aaron's um, Aaron's rod, right? That represent correction, represent priesthood, right? The Ten Commandments, which was the law of statutes and commandments, and the manna, the ones or purpose, uh, the measure and the portion that every man was given for his fill. Khan, we give all praises to Yah, Bashim Al Shai. We give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Hopefully, this was uh, edifying um, to the elect. Shalom. Until next time. Shalom.